Good afternoon, everyone. This is Jared Rand, and welcome to the Global Guided Meditation Call for August 6, 2021, Friday, 3 p.m. Eastern. Remind everybody we have a special reverse aging health call tonight at 9 p.m. on this line. Our deepest fear is not that we are inadequate. Our deepest fear is that we are powerful beyond measure. It is our right. It's our, it's our right and it's our light, not our darkness, that frightens us most. We ask ourselves, who am I to be brilliant, gorgeous, talented, and famous? And actually, who are we not to be? We are all part of the one God. And by us playing small does not serve the world. There is nothing enlightened about shrinking so that people won't feel insecure around us. We were, we entered these bodies to make manifest the glory of the gods that we are that is within us. And it is not just in some of us, it is in all of us. And when we let our own light shine, we unconsciously give other people permission to do the same. As we are liberated from our own fear, our presence automatically liberates others. This is something that we should choose to literally have in our heart minds 24-7. Transition of this planet, as we all know and feel, is in an immense, accelerated, almost as if time has been eliminated. And many people are experiencing that time seems to have been eliminated. It is because of the acceleration of the frequencies and what we're experiencing not only with the frequencies, but our bodies, our physical vessels, and our spirit energy on how it's continually advancing into a much higher existence of frequency. Celebrating ourselves every day in some new way. Celebrate the amazing being that you are. Say yes to your uniqueness to your exquisite joy and welcome the richness of who you are. Dive deep into the experience of loving every little thing about you and for no particular reason at all. We are already an expression of the divine. So doesn't it make sense that we let ourselves feel this and be free to celebrate this truth. We are an eternal soul, all of us, eternal souls. We are infinite beings who will never cease. We don't, we're not talking about the bodies yet, right now, but we don't cease. When we leave these bodies, we are eternal, we are forever. This is, eventually, people will become very excited about that. We celebrate this truth by spontaneously dancing, singing, and expressing gratitude for being alive not only this week, but every single second. We are here to honor all of the creativity inside of us and the many, many, many forms it takes. This universe has given us so many blessings, deep eternal love, and our job is to receive them with gratitude. Celebrating who we are will help us realize the immense truth of our true power. We are all so amazingly perfect 
Just accept it and see what it feels like. Don't fight it. The ego mind get involved. No. The more often we can rejoice in who we are, the more amazing experiences we will attract into our lives to celebrate. Now, our ego minds may ask, why should I celebrate little old me? What have I done or experienced that's worth celebrating? Well, let's, let's just say that whatever you think that is not worth celebrating about you is simply a negative projection from your mind, and it isn't real. I know this, this, is a, this takes much understanding, but many are beginning to understand it. The fact is, is that this universe has given us this awesome vehicle right now where we can experience the unique gift of pure conscious awareness. Pure conscious awareness. This awareness inside of us that we have is a result of a misunderstanding of who we truly are. Consciousness is the great unexplored area of this life. The final frontier. It is the invisible but essential ingredient that even science approaches with fear and trembling. That came from Swami Shakarananda. Mankind has conquered the outer world, maybe, yet it is his inner world and consciousness within that has not yet been fully understood and mastered. The fact is that we are both human and divine, and if we weren't both, this would be one pretty boring world. We each are so absolutely perfect exactly the way we are in this sacred balance. Just like every blade of grass, tree, and rose bush is perfect as it is. They don't negate themselves, compare and judge their differences. Can you imagine if they did? They cannot judge. They are simply love itself. This is our task as well. Become a wellspring of love for the unique consciousness within us. Become a unique wellspring of life and love for the unique consciousness within us. All the diversity of this planet is what makes planet Earth such a breathtaking place to inhabit. Each human being's uniqueness adds the brilliant color and richness to this planet that we so dearly cherish and love. Our so-called flaws, as we see them, are simply unique energy fields that are like imprints from the world giving us dimension and personality. We enrich the world because we exist, not because of what we do. This world needs us to be exactly the way we are, or else everyone else wouldn't be the divinely perfect way that they are. Put yourself in a state of mind where you say to yourself, here is an opportunity for you to celebrate like never before. My own power, my own ability to get myself to do whatever is necessary. Anthony Robbins. We are 100% guaranteed to discover this amazing being that we all are, and if we really slow down, stop and look within. If we don't find it instantly, keep looking. This constant inward journey is our opportunity to grow, and this is definitely worth celebrating. Stop looking at what 
we want to change or transform about ourselves. Start focusing on this seed of consciousness within each and every one of us. It is amazing to connect with it. There is so much to celebrate when we find the immense simplicity of what is inside. Any part of you that doesn't feel loved, worthy, or deserving to be loved is just waiting to discover this vast consciousness within. Each part wants to find that it is lovable and can instantly find this when it tunes into our infinite nature, which is divine and will never die. Sure, there are zillions of reasons to believe the opposite is true. Yet once we start observing this consciousness within us, we start taking action in the world from a different space. We can truly engage ourselves in an activity while celebrating who we are in the moment. And when we do this, everything will transform. Everything. Life has meaning only in the struggle. Triumph or defeat is in the hands of the gods. So let us celebrate the struggle. Swami Sabananda Yoga. First, when you, when any of us wake up in the morning, is to jump up and down and shout your first name and that you are so amazing and perfect and that you love you. Now, this is not something that people do regularly because, you know, they don't know who and what they are and they're embarrassed for whatever reason through the evil mind when you wake up in the morning is to jump up and down and shout your first name you are so amazing and perfect i love you it's true i mean why don't it's throw a party in your honor invite your closest friends have your friends share why they feel you are a beautiful child of God. Send yourself a love note. Pick out the most beautiful card and write about how much you love who you are as if you were writing your most beloved partner. Use tender, soft, sweet words of praise. Sing a song about how amazing you are. Just make up the words and lyrics as you go. Take a day off and declare it your own day to celebrate you. Spend the entire day doing what you truly and deeply want to do. Eat ice cream, walk in the park, read a book, go dancing, whatever it may be. We came here into these bodies to enjoy these lives. So many of us have self-suppressed ourselves because of the external authority and all the glitz and glamour of the physical world so it's like go ahead and enjoy your life you can do it sing praises about yourself in the mornings just like you would sing love songs to your beloved who you are underneath all these ideas about yourself is so exquisite so absolutely divine and perfect if you are ever challenged by your mind and would like highly effective enlightening tools that will expand you, these are some of them. What do most people do? Oh, they're embarrassed. Oh, I'm not going to do that silly. Sing my name out and tell myself I love myself. What a ridiculous thing. That's the ego mind. That's the training that a lot of us have received while in these physical bodies uh, in this lifetime and many others. This is a celebration of you. It's a celebration of each and every one of us. It's just that we choose to do that. That's what happens. You know, we we have this revolutionary empowering consciousness that is already here now. It's not coming, you know, from some faraway place. 
It's here now. When we stop all efforting scheming and trying to find it or create it, we instantly see the simple fact that it is here right now. It's like we want to become richer, more lovable, successful, or even more conscious. That is all fine and dandy. Just know that these are ideas and not the potent, powerful essence of who we all are. Consciousness instantly reveals itself when we realize that we are not this mind or its desires. The pure state of consciousness is unfolding our version of reality for us to enjoy. As we decide to perceive it in each moment all around us, it loves us that much. Only if you decide to perceive it in each moment all around you, because that's where it is. It loves you that much. Just surrender to it. Many people have fears. They don't even know why. Investigate this pure consciousness that's here now and how there is nothing you can do to change it. Do you know why the reason our lives can be so challenging? is because of one main obstacle. One main obstacle, we get over-identified with the mind and certain thoughts that it becomes attached to our or avoids. It becomes attached or avoids. The mind can get hooked like Velcro to certain roles, ideas, feelings, and memories and experiences that make us feel trapped. It's like a spider caught in its own web. The more it struggles, the more wrapped up and stuck it gets. The only way out of this mind trap is to surrender to the source of who we all are. And one of the greatest secrets to untangling ourselves and spinning a new web around us is in exploring the truth of what and who we all truly and really are. If we just practice using the mind to free the mind, practice using the mind to free the mind from all the thoughts it's been wrapped up in and attached to. We just get more mental activity. Instead of playing the game of the mind, start dismantling it. Let the mind weave the web it wants to weave. Yet choose to focus on the light and consciousness with in you. This is the most enlightening and empowering place to be and will greatly increase our manifesting vibration. We will become super omnipotently manifesting magnets for what we want. So it is to be wise in choosing what we want. The experiences that we will attract to us can only bring us into a more enlightened perspective when we abide in the knowing that consciousness is natural, effortless, and the essential eternal state of what and who we already are. Be curious about this consciousness. If you think that you know it, let that thought go. It's just a thought and not actually pure consciousness itself. Drop all ideas about who, all ideas about who you truly are. Dump them and liberate yourself completely. This consciousness is truly unknowable and cannot be pinned down as something that you understand once and are forever done with it. It is an infinite. It is as infinite as this universe and beyond and is here for us to explore throughout our entire lifetimes. Our job is to gently unfold it and discover this dynamic divine being that we already are. This consciousness is the God source and it is absolutely everywhere. The secret to discovering it is 
in being vulnerable, open, and receptive to this moment. Be honest with yourself about what your experience is, and then let that experience go. If resistance is here, become that wall and let it go. Explore every experience that arises until it is finished. Our lives will become more rich and juicy and full of aliveness. Consciousness is not cold, hard, or rigid by any means. It contains a sacred warmth that we will only find in the heart of it. This love is the love of our essence. It is already inside our heart right here and now. And all we can choose to do is surrender to what is true and real. So if you will, go to the place where you're not going to be interrupted. I'm sure we all are. And the first thing that we care to do is relax these bodies we're in. That's the first step. You're st stressed and tensed and worried. You're not going to be able to relax that body because you're too caught up into the body. So you relax the body. You ask yourself, because you're not the body. Remember this. You're not the body. You're the God within the body. So the body carries is like a magnet, right? It's got the ego mind. It's got all this stuff. And just about all of its illusions. It isn't real. So when we understand this, we look at the body and say, okay, so this, this vessel I'm in tracks everything. You know, the illusion of the ego mind and all this stuff. You know, tens of millions of programmed thoughts running by. Oh my God, how do I relax it? You look at everything. You look at the stress, the fear, the anxiety, the worry, the hatred, the anger, whatever it is you're carrying in that body. And then you ask yourself, why do I carry it? it th does it serve me the greatest good? No. So then why do I carry it? Why do I drag it around like a ball and chain through this life? Could it be that I've gotten so used to it that I'm comforted by it? That I'm fearful of not having stress, anxiety, fear, and worry? Could that be the case? I've chosen I must let it go to relieve the body of its stress, anxiety, fear, and worry. So I let it go. And as you let it go, the body becomes light, floats. You'll feel it. You'll know it. There's times when we have those moments where we do feel light, where we do float. Not often but on occasion, and if we're aware of it enough, we identify it. But when we begin to understand that we are gods within these bodies, these bodies are wonderful because they carry us around, and they help us experience a lot of things. If you, if you had a pile of rotten fish sitting in your home, would you continually let that just sit? Or would you get rid of it because the smell is so putrid? Or would you be afraid to get rid of it because you became so used to it that you were afraid to lose it? I know that sounds strange, but it's what a lot of us do. It's the same with our feelings as far as worry, stress, and fear. Those are not feelings. Those are thoughts instigated by the ego mind. So you let them go, and we're always moving forward. You never look back. You're always moving forward because you have the trust and the faith in yourself and the universe, unshakable faith and trust. And you're always, we're always moving forward. 
why do we look back? There's no reason to. So we say, okay, body, let's relax. I'm gonna, we're going to get rid of all this crap, this garbage. I'm no longer going to carry it around. It's just absolutely ridiculous. So in a loving way, I let it go. And then the body is so relaxed that you're in the now. And all the chatter's gone. All the noise chatter, all those thoughts that run by us. Cloud after cloud in the sky. You know, thought after thought after thought after thought after thought. They aren't even ours. So when we're in the now, we should always be in the now, choose to be. It is the eye of the storm the now. Whatever we're doing in the moment is the now. And the breath is the now. As long as you focus on your breath, you're in the now. When you are not focusing on the breath, I'll guarantee you one thing. You are not in the now. You're somewhere else. So the breath that we have is a divine positive energy. It is sacred because it sustains the bodies that the God is in, so to speak. And it also focuses us, strengthens us, relaxes us, eases us. If we didn't have the breath, could we laugh? No. If we didn't have the breath, would be would these bodies exist? No. Soul comes into the body, powers the body, creates the breath through the lungs, sustains the body that houses the kingdom of God. Very divine, positive energy. And the majority of people on this planet, they don't give it a time of day. In fact, the majority of people on this planet barely breathe at all, and they don't even know it. Now, the center path is the path to choose. Why? Because the path on the left is the past, and the past is dead. It used to be in the now, and then it is gone. This is what you keep moving forward. You don't look back. These are things that you pick up and learn and experience, whichever way that you store in your subconscious mind. We don't stay there. We have memories, and we pull those memories out of our subconscious mind. We, we, we reminisce with them, and then we put them back. And then we, we, we pull on um, memories and experience in, in past instances so that we can remind ourselves not to do the same thing that we did then because we've learned that it didn't work for us. But see, some of us, will go into that past. It's like an elephant graveyard. And look it up and look up at a picture of an elephant graveyard. And you'll know exactly what I mean. But you run your hand over it, you'll feel the vibrational frequency of exactly how how deaf and dank it is and in, in, inert. Okay, not alive. But some of us will sit there and will stay there so long Maybe because we believe that by living in the past, it's much better than living in the now because the now is frightening. Who knows? And so this is why most people, will they'll, they'll live there so long that they, they'll take that past, they'll bring it into a future that doesn't exist, they'll create that future from that past, and they will relive that past in that future. I mean, it's automatic. And this is why they will turn around and say, okay, They'll turn around and say, no matter what we do, this is where we always seem to end up. That's why. Just about every time. Now, then some of us will go into a future that doesn't exist. And the future...
we create the now. But some of us will go into the future and we'll go, when am I going to have this? When is this going to happen? And, all, and a lot of the times we feel hurried, stressful, worried about timelines, worried about what is this going to actually happen? We need to have it happen now. Why isn't it happening? And then we suffer. That's what we do. Only the moment, moment to moment. It isn't that easy at first because we're so used to doing the opposite, going into the past or the future. Worrying, stressing, and fearing. I'll guarantee you, you go into the future that doesn't exist, you're going to worry, stress, and fear. Because you're going to get frustrated. And the reason you get frustrated is because of what? Because things aren't happening the way you want them to happen. Why is this not happening? And then you become more fearful, more stressful. And then you get more anxiety. And then you get more worry. Then you get angry. You see how it works? And many of us, even though we know this, we still are in the game with that. Now, you know, sometimes, a lot of the times, we're focused on something, right? And it's right in the now. It's in the moment. Doesn't matter what it is, but it's in the now, the moment. And we are focused on it. But then we find ourselves wandering off in other thoughts. And most of the time, we don't even know we're doing it. And it's interesting that when we do know, when we are consciously aware, and the, and the most important thing is to be gentle, kind, generous, and humble with yourself, and in the deepest of gratitude, always with yourself, always, no matter what. And then you say to yourself, okay, so I'm wandering off. So I'll focus on my breath. And guarantee you, 3,000% of the time, you'll be in the now every single time you focus on your breath. And you practice that. I guarantee you, it almost becomes autopilot when you wander off. You'll immediately know, and you'll immediately go back to the now. You'll go into the now because you will know what to do. You'll focus on your breath. Breath in through the nose and breath out through the mouth. You're breathing. You'll listen to it. It'll focus you on the now because the breath is the now. You still the mind the ego, you still the subconscious, you still all that. You step outside of it. You leave the mind alone, and you watch it. You don't judge. You watch, and you learn. You learn how the mind operates. You learn how the ego operates. That's how we master the ego mind and the subconscious. Once we know what they're doing, then we become aware and then we're able to use the mind to train the mind so that you're able to direct the mind rather than it directing you. You're able to direct the ego rather than it directing you. Pretty nifty. And it does work. And it does take practice. And it isn't overnight. All of this in these meditations is mainly for all of us to begin identifying that we are the God in these bodies. And when you get used to that, I mean, where you're really grateful and you know that, I mean, not just know, but really know, then you're starting to direct things, the mind, the ego, subconscious mind, and you know the flow of the God energy that you are. Everything will shift. Everything changes. Remember, you're the universe. The universe is you. That is not just a saying. 
it is a reality. And everything outside of us is the illusion. Now, we know, right, that we are the God in the body. The soul comes into the body. The body is produced to house the soul. So as the soul enters the body, it powers the body up. The soul is heaven. The body's earth. Heaven on earth. And then, when we really do understand what this means, we realize that every step we take, we're creating paradise on this planet. Not only that, but we are shining our divine positive God to force love light energy outward 360 degrees 24 7 visualize that through your heart mind's motion picture and feel it because this is what we do we're always creating always progressing unless we allow the ego mind to run us forever And some of us will, will become, we will know, we will learn that when we choose to leave these bodies, we will understand that we are the light. That's imperative. It is paramount that you will understand this before you leave the body so that when you do leave the body, you know that you are the light. It's what you learn here in this life that will assist you, the God that you are, when you leave the body. Really important. So if you wanted to, you could fly outside the planet's atmosphere, right? You could look at the planet, and all you would see is this brilliant white light. It would be so brilliant and white that you wouldn't even have to look at it. You would feel it. And it's so brilliant and, 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 and it's so bright that it is the brightest in the darkness of sacred space. A God planet paradise that is brilliantly glowing and bright throughout all that there is, ever has been, ever will be, ever beyond forever. Eight billion gods, consciously aware. So we look at these bodies that we're in, and we, 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 it's, it's a good thing to do that. And you see that running right up through the center of the spinal column of that body are seven lights ball of light, wheels of light, you know, all different descriptions, all different discussions on how many there are and so on and so forth. We'll just go with the basic of seven. And you notice that you look at, at the body and you say, well, okay, so there's a red one there, and that's at the tailbone, goes all the way to the top of the head. What are those? Well, people call them chakras. Some, some religious beliefs, some spiritual beliefs uh, call them certain things. Um, energy vortex is uh, um, the wheels of light, uh, chakras, chi, ki, this energy. So you, the God, flows through those energy vortexes. They're etheric, they're spiritual uh, uh, essence, so they're not like a block of wood that you can pick up and juggle. If you tried to pick it up, you'd pass through it. And so why are they there? Well, because you, the God, flows through them and touches every part of that body. 
your, you, you, you function that body. You give that body the power and energy. I guarantee you, you leave that body, that body stops. stops it, it stops functioning. Why do you think that body has to have an umbilical cord to keep it sustained while it's in the mother's womb? And her, her soul, her God, powers it. You see how it all works? So it's vital to know the body as the God that you are because you're in the body. Makes sense, right? Would you get in a car not knowing how to drive it, not knowing about it, not knowing how to take care of it? Well, unfortunately, many do that. So, Our trip through the energy vortexes in these bodies is endless. It continues as long as we stay in the body. First one, right? What is the red wheel of life? Well, it's called the root chakra. It's right in the tailbone. What is, it, what is its function? Well, it deals with survival. What does that mean? It, it represents, it's the, the center of our survival, etherically, energetic-wise. And our survival is food, clothing, finances, water, shelter, and, and what, what stops our survival? What interrupts our survival? Fear. Fear does. And I'm not saying fear is bad because fear can be utilized in many different ways once we're consciously aware. So take a bunch of us, throw us in the wilderness. All we have is clothes on our backs. We rely on each other, right? We work as one. Why? Because we want to stay in these bodies. But those of us who will panic and become frightful and fearful, they'll be forced to leave the body a lot quicker. They'll, they'll do it themselves. So survival is blocked by fear. Then we go to the orange wheel of light. This is the sacral chakra. This is our sexuality, pleasure, joy, bliss, happiness, sex, you know, all of it. And we've all experienced it in this life. You've been there where you've just, everything is just, it flows. And, and there's no, you're not in your own way. You're not fighting anything. You're just going with the flow. And so what happens is you're just, and seventh heaven, and you are enjoying it. And then here comes the ego mind, and then that feeling you get, it's a guilt. Guilt. You're, you feel guilty for enjoying your life, right? You feel guilty. What the heck? Your natural state of being, and you feel guilty, experience it. So that little ego comes in, so you you can't, uh, and this is a feeling, you can't uh, you you can't have this forever. You better enjoy it while you can, because eventually it's going to end. And so th this dictates the ego mind dictates to your heart mind, and you get that feeling, and then of course, guess what? It ends, and then throughout these lives, we're guilty for being happy enjoying ourselves. Everybody on this planet deserves the best of everything. Period. No argument. Whatever it may be. So, our pleasure is blocked by our guilt and our sacral chakra. Then we move to the uh, yellow wheel of light, willpower, solar plexus chakra. And our willpower is blocked by shame. This is another tragedy. So our fortitude, right, moving forward, stops, is sidelined by shame. Then we move to the heart chakra, emerald green wheel of light. This is our ability to love while in these bodies. It's the ability for the body to love. And it is blocked by grief. If you're in grief, which is another illusion because we don't know who and what we are, that's why we go into grief. 
It blocks our ability to love. What a tragedy. All from not knowing who and what you truly are. Then we move to the blue wheel of light, throat chakra. This deals with what? Well, vocal cords and everything in the body speaks, voice, truth. And then we block our truth by our lies. Then we go to the indigo wheel of light. This is the third eye chakra. This is our insight, you know, intuition blocked by illusion. This is something that the, the ego mind conjures and thought and everything that we believe and create. Uh, then the illusion blocks our insight and our perception. Then we move to the crown chakra, the top of the head. Violet wheel of light. This is our direct connection to the divine. Cosmic energy, pure consciousness. And is blocked by ego attachment. So we as the gods flowing through these energy vortexes. See, things, we, we, we're stopped. We, we're blocked because of that, see? And then we begin to understand what they mean in the body, the emotions, the organs, see? This is, it's like a roadmap that's been given to us. All we've got to do is choose to discover it. And then when the only one get lost anymore, and we won't be lost. So we pull our energy along with our divine positive energy to the top of the, the head. We're like a perpetual energy fountain. The God force love light energy flows through this body on a continual basis. It goes up over the head, back down around. The lights create an aura field. The light within shines outside of us. So we have these different colors emanating outside the body. We are a pure electric being, omnipotently powerful, the gods that we are in these bodies. So we have an organ, it's called a pineal gland. It is not fully health functioning, functioning, but not at a real high frequency. Now, that pineal gland is important to us while we're in these bodies because it connects us when it's fully healthy and functioning and vibrant. It connects us to all the particles of existence. This moves us into the awareness of what we are in pure consciousness. What do you think the God is? The God is pure consciousness. What do you think we are in these bodies? Pure consciousness. The label is called God. because science is very frightened about pure consciousness. So we hold our, our cells, our energy, the gods that we are, top of the head of these bodies, right? And we compress it very briefly. We are love, we are God, and we are one. And in that short period of time, we, we transform ourselves into a pure liquid energy and we release ourselves over the pineal gland. We don't go, I mean, it doesn't, we don't dissipate. We just, we supercharge the pineal gland. Now you can see the pineal gland through your heart, mind's motion picture, uh, however you view it. I see it as a green ball rosebud. As soon as I pour the God that I am over it, it immediately transforms into this massive, fully bloomed, multicolored petaled rose, giving off just an absolutely wonderful fragrance. And it's shimmering, sending these energy pulses that just penetrate me, head to toe, inside and out, constantly. Almost as if it isn't really out there. It's in here. And the feeling that I experience is not describable. It, it is it's the deepest eternal love and peace and joy and gratitude. And it's not intermittent. It's like it's always there because it is. And then you discover that the rose is the God and 
you, the God, is the rose. You're both one. It's a reflection for you to understand of the divine perfection as the God pure consciousness that you are, always have been, always will be, ever beyond and forever. Now we know that you know, the soul, the body, the higher self, the spirit, heart, mind, ego, mind, subconscious mind. These are all the body. These are the illusions with the body. But we're all one. And we know that there are other parts of us. And some of the parts are asleep, some aren't. So we communicate with the ones that are awake. And that's why these meditations continue to expand and intensify and grow. Now, it's not like the parts of us that are asleep we leave behind. We can't. They're part of us. They they live with us. They just don't hear us. That's why they can't participate in the meditation. But they're with us. So we reach out to the parts of us that are awake. like all the light energy beings and all that there is, ever has been, ever will be, ever beyond and forever, including this planet Earth, Gaia, Arya, and this now. Yet, only those, same with all of us, only those that are consciously aware that they're of and from the highest of deepest, deepest, deepest eternal love and of and from the highest of deepest, deepest, deepest eternal gratitude can be with us in this now, in this meditation, form of the circle of light, complete liberation of this planet. Now they come in the Google Plexus. One Gogaplex fills this entire universe with not even a square inch of sacred space to spare. Now they come in trillions of Gogaplexes from trillions of universes from every direction. On this planet, there are trillions of them. We're only familiar with the smidgen of them. They come in shapes, color, sizes, forms, configurations, which we never see because of the eyes we have of these bodies are limited. So we only see 1% of what is. And the ones that we're somewhat familiar with are the fairies, the sprites, the elves, the gnomes, the dwarves, the trees, the trolls, the elementals, earth, air, water, fire, ether, wood, the mermaid, the dolphin, the whale, the pegasus, the unicorn, the centaur, the minotaur, and many, many, many more. And literally in the Google Plexus, they are with us now consciously. Call upon all the off-worlders, celestials, galactics, yet only those who are consciously aware that they are of and from the highest of deepest, deepest, deepest eternal love and of and from the highest of deepest, deepest, deepest eternal gratitude and be with us in this now, in this meditation, form of this circle of light, complete liberation of this planet. But we're only familiar with a smidgen of them. Over a thousand travel through the solar system every day. Trillions throughout the universes every day. And the ones that we're somewhat familiar with, the Adians, Syrians, Arcturians, Andromedans, Felines, Zeta Reticuli, Nords, Greys, Draco, Reptilian, Golden Pyramid, Avion, and many, many, many more. Now, they have been assisting us in our evolution, enlightenment, ascension, freeing ourselves from our own self-imposed bondage and our own self-imposed slavery. And they are with us now in the billions consciously. We call upon all the inhabitants of inner earth, hollow earth, and dark and beneath earth. Yet, only those who are consciously aware that they're of and from the highest of deepest, deepest, deepest eternal love and of and from the highest of deepest, deepest, deepest eternal gratitude can be with us in this now, in this meditation, form of the circle of light and complete liberation of this planet.
Now, they come in the billions, and they are with us now consciously. We call upon all of our loved ones, all those who have ascended out of body in this lifetime and all lifetimes that we've inhabited, yet only those who are consciously aware that they are of and from the highest of deepest, deepest, deepest eternal love and of and from the highest of deepest, deepest, deepest eternal gratitude can be with us in this now, in this meditation, forming the circle of light and the complete liberation of this planet Earth, Gaia, Arya, in this now. And they are with us now in the billions consciously. All the archangels, cherubim, seraphim, archetypes, ascended masters, Kuan Yin, Maitreya, Buddha, Lakshmi, Ganesh, Gaia, Saint Germain, Christ, El Moria, Amandantia, Pell, Thoth, Yahweh, Yeshua, many, many, many more. And both of them, only those that are consciously aware that they're of and from the highest, the deepest, deepest, deepest eternal love, and of and from the highest, the deepest, deepest, deepest eternal gratitude, can be with us in this now, in this meditation, forming the circle of light and complete liberation of this planet. And the archangels, they're a civilization that vibrates at a different frequency than we do, so we don't see them like we see each other. We interact with them quite a bit. We don't know it a lot of the times. We have a feeling, though, and they have one message they give us all. They convey to us. It's, it's delivered in many, many, many different ways, and, it, and to simplify it, isn't it absolutely magna glorious to be alive in these bodies in this now? And that, when you acknowledge it, is bliss. And they can surround any one of us at any one time in the tens of thousands. Because of their vibrational frequency, they can house a large number in a small area. Now, the Ascended Masters have mastered ascending into physical form and out of physical form, whole, pure, God form, pure consciousness. We have ascended into physical form to master physical form to create our experiences to perfect our creation. And they are all with us now in uncountable numbers, consciously. We're all gathered arm in arm, hand in hand in full compassion, non-judgment, non-negativity, stillness of mind, gentleness, kindness, generosity, and humbleness, bliss, joy, peace, tranquility, benevolence, prosperity, abundance. And we're all one, and we're all God, and we're all love. And our God force, love, light, energy is in all that there is, ever has been, ever will be, ever beyond, and forever. And it continues to intensify, and it continues to expand. We immediately form a circle of light around the equator of this planet Earth, Gaia, Arya, and this now. This circle of light emanates from the God force, love, light, energy within each and every one of us. It is so brilliant that it grays out the darkness of sacred space. It would take a billion trillion suns to even come close to its brightness. And it's flooding this planet. All life on it, in it, above it, and below it. 24-7, nonstop. The highest of the highest, highest, deepest, 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 purest, 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 eternal love, of which we all are, flooding everything, old life, the highest screen value universe. We begin to ascend above the planet. We're immediately met with a massive ocean of living. 
bathing, basking, shining and reflecting on all of us gathered in this meditation over a billion on and off world. It's, it's trillions and trillions of vibrant colored flashes, splashes. So we zero in on the reflective point little microscopic mirrors perfectly etched. So we enter the mirrors and we discover that all of us gathered in all that there is, ever has been, ever will be, ever beyond and forever. We're all teachers and students of each other. We're either teaching or learning or both. Always, eternally. Everybody that walks in your life, no matter who they are, period, are there to teach you something, or they're there to learn from you. It's simultaneous. It's phenomenal. Once you start to understand what this means, there is no limits. There never have been. We continue to ascend above the planet, we're immediately met with the emerald green flaming healing light of Archangel Raphael. This is a common light that we created that reminds us all that we are all the power of healing. We are then met with the violet blue purple flaming light of Archangel Michael. This is a column of light that we created that reminds us all of our omnipotent power, strength, and resolve. We are then met with the white fire. This is a column of light that we all created that reminds us all that from head to toe, inside and out, 24 7, eternally infinity, that we are protected with a white fire armor way beyond the earthly understanding of armor and plate armor and all that stuff. This emanates from the God Force Love Light energy in each and every one of us. It is impenetrable, it is protecting us 24 7. It doesn't end. Nothing can affect it. No voodoo, no nothing. No lower dark matter, survival matter frequencies. No demon attachments, no attachments, nothing. They can't because they'll vaporize if they get in there. And they know this. Yet, only you, only you, only you have the power that if you decide to lower your vibrational frequency low enough through hatred, greed, anger, frustration, fear, hurriedness, envy, you will create a breach in your white fire armor, whether consciously or unconsciously, enough so to allow all the lower dark matter, survival matter frequencies come flowing in, and then the demons, and then the attachments, and all the rest that goes with it. Now, if you do decide to do this, you're met with two columns of light that we created to remind ourselves of the purple transmuting flame. This is a column of light that we can bring in. We can transmute all the lower dark matter, survival matter frequencies into neutral light substance, sending them to pure consciousness where they're completely vaporized, never to be again. We are then met with the violet ray. This column of light reminds us to bring in the violet ray we can literally cleanse, purify the area where these lower dark matter, survival matter frequencies were, sealing the breach in our white fire armor and restoring our vibrational harmony of the highest of the deepest eternal love, gratitude, and peace. We are then met with the golden white pink light. This is a column of light that we created to remind us all that we are the sun. The sunlight, the sun sets, the sun rises, mountainscapes, oceans, rivers, lakes, streams, the trees, the forest, the soils, the animal, the clouds, the sky, everything. We are everything, and everything is us, literally. So the next time that you see a sunset, or a sunrise, or a starlit night sky, 
or an ocean front or a mountain horizon. It is you. You're the beauty. You're the grandeur. You're the majesty. It is you. It's all of us. It always has been. It always will be. Ever, beyond, and forever. We continue to ascend above the planet. Some of us step outside our physical forms, and we hover effortlessly above our bodies. Now, why do we do this? Because we can. We're immediately met with this massive crystal night tower. We created it. It's larger than the solar system. In the center of the column, you see this massive oblong sphere. In the center of the sphere is a golden white bowl of light. It is surrounded by numerous rings of light, all multicolored and vibrant. And they're all saturating us all. The golden white bowl of light is the highest of the deepest, deepest, deepest eternal love. Then comes gratitude. Then comes peace. Then comes well-being. Then comes great wealth, great abundance, prosperity, gentleness, kindness, generosity, humbleness, tranquility, benevolence, prosperity. It's endless. And it is us. It is a reflection of the gods within these bodies. At the top, we designed it so that the golden ocean can come cascading down 360 degrees as it's doing right now. This is the highest of the highest high of deep eternal love and gratitude and peace flooding us all. All of our bodies, everything, all life, the highest supreme value in the universe. Feel this in your heart minds. It's absolutely spectacular. Actually experiencing the gods that we are. Now we're drops of this golden ocean. We also hold the essence of this golden ocean. Golden ocean is the drops, drops are the golden ocean. And the only illusion is separation. We see our meditative sphere, it sets center circle. We created this sphere over three, half, three and a half years ago, every day. It holds all of our meditations in perpetual motion, which means they never go. They just keep growing. And they're flooding all of us, head to toe, inside now. This entire planet, all life, highest supreme value in the universe, nonstop. You feel that. Step into it whenever you choose. It's magnificent. This is why this fear can be seen, heard, and felt, and all that there is, ever has been, ever will be, ever beyond and forever. This is why it continues to intensify and it continues to expand. Not only this planet, or this solar system, not only this quadrant, but the galaxy, but the galaxy and beyond. The universe and beyond. It's a practice that just maybe other parts of us across all existence will make it permanent. I'll join you in the meditation and return to close the cell.
take an easy breath in through the nose and an easy breath out through the mouth. Move slowly and easily. The more that we begin to understand that we are the light, that we are the God, there is no debate. That which is in these bodies is divine perfection in each and every one of us. We are omnipotently powerful. We are deep, pure, eternal love and gratitude. And to embrace this without fear. We've carried the fear long enough, the fear of who fear of knowing who and what we are. So it's time to choose to embrace it, celebrate it. And, and by doing so, we become more aware, our vibrational frequencies continue to increase. And there won't be any chance ever again for anything to infiltrate this planet, this civilization, period. Because it will all be vaporized, never to return. Take this with you for the rest of the day, into the evening and night, and into the following morning. And we will return here tonight at 9 p.m. for our reverse aging health call. And tomorrow... Saturday, August 7th, 2021, 3 p.m. Eastern, to continue our global guided meditation.